Hello there, brothers and sisters. So today I wanted to talk about this absurdity of the fact that we, as antinatalists, and even most people in general who aren't even antinatalists, natalists even, how they themselves and us, just with even basic degrees of empathy and compassion, can come up with huge numbers of ways that this universe, this world could be structured better in a more efficient way with far less pain and ideally no pain. We can think of these ways and how these would be doable very fucking easily. So the fact that we can actually process this and we can actually, and we would, if we had the power to do so, actually implement such a thing, right? A more mild version of things. If we couldn't do anything else, we'd at least guarantee that pain was minimized to a bare minimum. If we only had limited power, we would easily do that. And we would, actively do that as one of the major things we'd focus on. Obviously, of course we would, you know, if we're actually going to follow through on what our viewpoint is and we're not going to be hypocrites, then of course we would do that. So the very fact we're able to do this is immediate instant fucking disproof of this, I, this traditional Judeo Christian idea of God being this, the God of this world and this universe being this benevolent loving creator who has these deeper plans and deeper purposes for everything in spite of all the torture and rape that uh, it allows to happen and shit like this. You know, it's like, okay, obviously this entity is not very fucking smart or intelligent, not very powerful, not very aware because it can't figure out even a remotely slightly better situation than this. And there's so fucking many of them you could think of that would be, that would easily be better than this, <laughs> but no, this is the fucking one we're in. So it's like, the fact that we can come up with better ideas than the shithead who runs this particular situation or cosmos or the indifferent asinine uh, sentience that is behind this, the, the fact that we can just come up with better ideas immediately than the way it is currently says a lot. That says a shit ton, in fact. you know, It's like, oh, so you mean all these other ideas and the ability to implement all these other things aren't doable, never have occurred, are not even within the wherewithal of this supposed God figure to do under any circumstances. All it's ever going to do is just keep perpetuating this cycle until some eternally indefinite in the future utopia that it brings everybody into at the end of it all. And then, Oh, sorry about all the torture and hell and everything I put you through. Here's utopia now. Well, it's like, well, fuck N none of this utopia, heaven or whatever the fuck else. It doesn't counteract or make up for, any of the fucking torture and pain, any sentience experienced here. So it's like, fuck you, dude. Like it doesn't make up for it. And that's the other point. It's like, no matter what the deeper purpose may be, no matter how deeply calculated or thought the purpose behind the shit show is, it literally doesn't make any fucking difference. And in fact, it just adds insult to injury because why? Because even if there is the most deeply calculated, most benevolently intended purpose behind every fucking suffering that happened, especially the excruciating types of pain. And that's actually a thing going on. Well, fuck, it still doesn't make up for the pain that was felt or experienced. It never can. No amount of pleasure can make up for the horror of the pain experienced by sentient and sincere, no matter how fucking deeply thought it is or how elaborate of a, of a scheme it is. And that's, this is what Judeo Christian uh, monotheists don't understand. They don't fucking get it. They don't understand this, you know, at least polytheists, they have a more reasonable stance in this. They're not making any claims that there's any being at all that has the ability to really fix any of it um, necessarily, that they're not claiming that. Whereas the Judeo-Christian monotheists are claiming that there's beings who have the ability to fix this shit show, um, you know. So basically what you're dealing with is obvious immediate bullshit. If you've got a good solid bullshit detector, you can immediately pick up on that quite fast. Even when I actually, in my earlier days, and I'll do more videos on that, agreed with certain aspects of more traditional Judeo-Christian views towards God, I never bought the, the really traditional views in the sense that I always had my own nuanced perspective towards the situation and what was going on with it. I didn't, um, I never bought into this deeper purposes bullshit. I, I never did, really. When I was, um, even when I actually agreed with, stupidly, like an idiot, agreed with those views somewhat more when I was younger. Mainly because that's all I was exposed to constantly as I was a kid. And I just, I didn't, I wasn't even aware of the elaborateness of the actual Gnostic views or these other views or what they actually believed or taught or anything like that. I was just bombarded with this. Um, it was non-denominational Christianity, but it was really just, 
it was hardcore Protestantism, like just over and over and over and over again. Like, so, but once I busted out of that shit and was informed about, oh, these other ideologies are actually well thought and far deeper thought, they exist, right? These other views actually exist in the world. Then I was like, oh yeah, I left that shit like as fast as I possibly could, you know? So, I mean, what's interesting too, is like, you think about this, right? how does this not occur to traditional Judeo-Christian monotheists? I mean, even when I was that, it, this still occurred to me. It still occurred to me that I had a better plan or a better idea of how to do stuff than this supposed God did. It was like objectively, clearly, easily, easy to see a more benevolent, more pleasure-filled plan that didn't involve pain and suffering and all this other shit that I would have easily fucking implemented if I had the power to do so, you know, and the knowledge and all that shit, you know, it's like, but the fact that that never fucking happens ever, no matter how much people pray, they worship all this other physical miracles never happen. You know, none of this shit ever fucking happens in terms of altering the physical state of reality or anything. It's like, so it's a complete total fucking redundancy. It's like, Oh God, all hail the infinitely tardy, all hail the infinitely late to the show, all hail the one who has this ever eternally indefinite deeper plan that he never clarifies or specifies what the fuck it is. So it's like, you know, it's like, okay, so even if, even if this little Christian thing happens and then, you know, Christ appears and then, Oh, you know, the whole world's whisked away to heaven, the Christians and whatever else. And the good people are like sorted out and sifted out and shit, which it's obvious that's not going to fucking happen that way. But even if something like that did happen, like everybody who's rational and sane and also benevolent would be like, well, shit, you're only a couple of fucking billion years too late. I mean, what about all the millions and billions and gazillions of forms that suffered and died and were tormented all these fucking ages after ages after ages. And then now you fucking show up. It's like, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> Come on. You know, too late, too little, too short, man. It's like fucking talk about being fucking tardy or some shit, dude. That's uh, damn dude. It's like, dude, we've fucking like gone beyond your ass so fucking far. It's like, even, even if that kind of an entity fucking exists, we've had to fend for ourselves so fucking long here that it's like, we're better off without such a fucker because it's like, he doesn't do jack squat to actually fucking fix anything, a plan that he supposedly put in place that fucks everything over, you know, <laughs> and blames it all on us, our sins. And like, come on, get the fuck out of here, man. You know, it's like, it's like we've had to create our own world and do our own shit and come up with our own ideologies and philosophies and figure shit out ourselves anyway. So it's like, what the fuck use is that kind of an entity anyway? It's like, she's, oh, okay, so you exist somewhere in the clouds or, you know, or whatever, and you inspired some people to write some books, which I don't agree with, obviously. It's just man-made bullshit, the Bible and things like this. But, you know, okay, let's say such a being did exist. It doesn't make any fucking difference. In fact, it just shows that he's a sleazeball piece of shit, really a cosmic sleazeball piece of shit, you know? And on top of that, the threats of hell and all this other fuck, come on, what the fuck, dude? Like, that's so obviously a sadistic man-made concept from sadistic, sexually depraved old farts. There's no fucking way any benevolent, sane, rational person would ever remotely fucking even c conceive of a, an, a literal eternal hell. Holy shit, dude. There's not a single fucking culture in the world other than the Judeo-Christian traditions that even remotely conceived of a literal eternal hell. Maybe Zoroastrianism had something like that, maybe. But Zoroastrian and Judeo-Christian traditions are the only fucking two that even suggested that shit. And more so specifically in the Christian traditions, actually. Judaism didn't even have that extreme of an idea of the afterlife until Christianity came around. They had this Sheol idea, which is just this dark, bleak kind of a thing, but it wasn't anywhere near like this burning forever bullshit. So it's like, <laughs> just, <laughs> and if there were such an entity that even remotely conceived of such a thing as even a possible idea that it would allow to exist, like that entity is so far removed from being anything worthy of worship. It's not even fucking funny. That, that entity is like the most evil sadistic motherfucker you could imagine. Like an entity that has all this power and all this wherewithal. And you know, oh, an eternal hell. That sounds like a potentially good idea to just let it exist somewhere and have it as a thing. Yeah, let's let, let's have it as a thing. And I'll just create this elaborate fucking narrative as to why it's not my fault and why, oh, you're, you're just fucked there. You rejected me. And yeah, I'll just blame it on them. Ha ha ha. You know, chuckle, chuckle, ha ha, whatever the fuck. It's a, come on, dude. 
or this this idea of oh god is so far beyond us he's like this eternal indifferent he's aloof and all this well it's like well fuck well what use is he then either if he's so far beyond and so incapable of processing anything that fucking happens here then you're just basically worshiping a rock at that point i mean like he's just gonna sit there and just never do anything to fix it you know and just isn't aware of what of what we experience anyway it's like fuck man so the mass, the supreme indifference, basically, right? The supreme aloof one. Well, that's not worthy of fucking worship either. In any way you cut the coin on this, any way you look at it, any angle of vision you looked at towards this thing, if you're a sane, benevolent, rational person, you see the bullshit of it top to bottom, inside and out, right, left, and center, you know? Yeah, that's dead. That's that whole traditional monotheistic idea, the Judeo-Christian thing. It's dead in the water. It's going to be fucking gone within the next couple of years. Next couple hundred years max at the latest, more than likely within the next solid few decades, it's going to be almost completely gone. I can almost guarantee you if the way things keep going the way they are and rationality spreads the way it is. Yeah, there's no way that shit's going to continue to last. It's so fucking stupid. And it's so obviously man-made and shit like that. And you know what's interesting? I look back on it. It's like the only fucking reason you believe it is because they spin this whole... But the majority of shit that they spin on it is all of their own man-made shit that they've added to it. A lot of it's a bunch of secular shit that they mix in with it that's not even in the fucking Bible in the first place. So they, they create this huge other elaborate story behind all these things. Oh, God does it for this reason and that reason. And this is part of his plan and this and that, blah, 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 blah. They create this big matrixy like elaborate maze view of the whole thing. Literally, what it is, is just to confuse people and distract them from the fucking issue. So if you're like, oh, okay, so God's plan is so deeply fucking calculated, and there's so many goddamn layers to it, that, oh, he must be right. He must know what he's doing, man. It's, come on, what the fuck, dude? You could just, you could just be a, a trickster asshole like Loki, and just create an elaborate scheme of fucking the, all this cosmic shit just for the fucking joke of it all, and make it seem like you actually have a deeper plan to it when you don't. You could act like that. There's so many fucking possibilities to that. Just because the scheme is fucking elaborate as fuck doesn't say anything about benevolence. In fact, it indicates that there's severe lack of benevolence if there's going to be that much elaborateness to it. It's almost like the movie Labyrinth, right? The Goblin King or some shit like that. Like, fuck. So basically, they're worshiping the Goblin King from the Labyrinth as God. It's like he creates this elaborate, you know, roundabout scheme for all the shit, puzzles you got to figure out and everything else. It's like, who the fuck wants to worship a being like that? Come on, seriously, you know? Especially if the entity is going to have you do all that shit and there's no, there's a guarantee of leaving this world in a painful, shitty-ass fucking way and there's no fucking fix to this situation right now. It's all just for later, future, indefinitely into the future bullshit. Oh, yeah, I have a plan for the future. Later, 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 later. You know, you're going to be fine later on. Later. Just just patience. Hold in there. Hold in there. Hang in there. Eventually, you're going to die in an agonizing way anyway. But just hold in there. After the agonizing death, things are going to be good eventually. It's like, wait a minute. That's exactly what all these fucking bullshitty pyramid scheme fuckers do. They, do the, they, they, they push things forever into the future, and you never fucking get what they promise you. It's like you, the money never fucking comes. You never get the return on anything that you put in. It's just like, you know, with the bullshit pyramid schemes, Amway, Amway or whatever the fuck it is, you know, unless you actually join and become one of the hierarchy, schemey, lying pieces of shit that run the thing, you never get anywhere with it. So it's like, okay, well, fuck that, because it's just this, you know, infinite promise into the future bullshit. Then what's the fucking use of it? Like, you know, if I have to sacrifice and suffer and pain I have to give so much pain just to experience any benefit from any of this shit. Then what's the fucking use in any of it? You know, the only useful pleasure is pleasure that you have freely, that you don't have to pay pain and toil and work and all this shit for. Pleasure is experienced in spite of pain and toil, not because of it. It's appreciated in spite of that, not because of that. Okay. This is something people psychologically need to really fucking grasp. Um, so I'm always personally much happier when I'm just happy and experiencing joys without having to have suffered or paid money to, to gain something. Like it actually pisses me off when I have to pay money to buy something I'm interested in to have it. I'd rather just have it freely handed to me. So I just have it, you know, cause it's like, yeah, I still appreciate it, but it's, it's now you have this emotional anxiety attached to the fact that, well, fuck, I had to give up all this money for it. So it's not that you're appreciating it more due to the money you paid. It's just the fact that you're now more anxious over the money you've lost for something you would have preferred to have for free. 
you know, and if somebody genuinely values something that they have to pay and give something up for more than something they get free, I don't fucking relate to that psychology. I'm going to do a whole nother video series on that by itself. But anyway, I'll talk to you later. Have a good one.